Um, right off the bat, this game actually hits you with their version of their religion. And one of the main things that I actually enjoyed about this game is how integral their religion actually is. Integral. I, I, wrong words. How important it actually is within the story itself. Um, if you're playing a mage, <clears throat> you're actually either working against or for one or the other. And you actually get to make a couple choices within the game, which you'll actually be able to see. Yes, this is an older game, but we do have one great thing going for us. We do have Inquisition coming out soon. So, I will create a character. Will I be human? I could be a mage. I could be an elf mage. Should I be an elf mage? I like mages. I could be a dwarf. I could be a rogue. Or a... You know, I find it funny that all that these two can be all three, and then this one's just like, meh, whatever. Anyway, so we're going to go through the classes and look at the females, because there's female dwarves in this game. No other place has female dwarves. Unless you're playing World of Warcraft. And I love how, like, the... the it, the, it goes the human, the elf, and then you have the dwarf. Now, it, it, this is just me... And my fantasy is normally elves are taller than humans from everything that I know <laughs> with elves. They're not much taller, they're around the same height, but you have this poor elf chick who's short. Um, I, I honestly, I'm going to go with the dude, so I can do that. And I do believe I'm actually going to go human, and I'm going to go mage, because I like mages. And my background, wield the power of as dangerous oh I can't read today I apologize so uh, wielding a power as dangerous as it is potent you know that magic is a curse for those lacking the will to control it yeah I got the will to control it yo anyway I'm gonna be a mage and um be all scruffy. Probably gonna end up going with a bald guy, because, you know, I'm, 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 I'm balding, so I'll go with the bald guy. Or the semi-bald guy, I'm not sure yet. This guy's kind of cool. I'll go with him. Alright, so, my skin I'm gonna leave white, of course. Hair, doesn't matter. Eyes, doesn't matter. Nose, doesn't matter. But it's very... for that amazingness right there in this giant lag of doom. Anyway, so. Fun times, fun times. My amazing couch. Yeah, I know, right? Um, so. I shall name myself Ariel. Apparently I'm Uriel I'm, I'm, I'm I, I, I can't change my last name. I forgot about that. So, um, I am going to go next. Uh, my strengths. Um, do I want next? I want willpower. Willpower is good. Magic's good. So I'll go there, there. Constitution. Uh, dexterity. And constitution. Just because. Alright, next. Now I get to choose my power. Thank you, Uh Points to spend. I have one. Uh, okay. Ooh. Stealing, trap making, survival, herbalism, poison making, combat training. I can make a battle mage. But anyway, back to the whole everything within this. Um, do I want fireball, rock armor, 
Frost. I want Lightning, of course. Lightning, I can't get yet, though, apparently. Um, I'll go with that. Uh, and then... Uh, do I want to go with Entropy? Because Entropy was fun. Drain Life! Yes! Yes, I'm going to play it on normal, because I'm normal. Anyway, now, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop here and actually have a little discussion here, because if you actually <clears throat> listen to the beginning of the, of the video, and they talk about the mages going and turning into demons, so to speak, which turned into the dark spawn, the mages are the original reason why everything went haywire with the dark spawn and whatnot. So thinking about that we have this prejudice against all mages and since there's a prejudice between all mages and people that have magic powers they automatically lock them up which kinda sorta is reminiscent of many things that have actually happened throughout history but the religious aspect of that is that the Templars are the in a sense religious uh, police so to speak that lock up the mages and kind of sort of guide them the way that they want them to be so it, it's kind of like a an illuminati-esque type scenario where you're guided along a certain path and you can't go any other way and you have to learn the, what they want you to learn and it's counterproductive in the learning experience if you ask me but the Fade is kind of like a, a version of, uh, the easiest way to say it is hell, or um, uh, nightmares, so to speak. Uh, due to all of that, we have other aspects of the mages that are very religious as well, because the mages themselves are more in tune with who they are, nature, uh, the elements themselves, so they're kind of uh, a different form of, of, of religion, more of a uh, earthly religion than a um, prophet or uh, lead religion with a, a singular being being in charge. So it also shows a transition from a religion of nature to a religion worshipping a being, and in a sense. Anyway, I shall continue. So. If I may continue. Uh, lyrium is actually kind of like a drug, so to speak. So, it, it you, you become addicted to it. Um, or it becomes a part of you, so to speak. The more you use or consume the... Or hold or whatever. The more addicted you get to it. So... Oh, kill. Sweet, Sam. Uh, bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize about this little conundrum here. Really? I did that. There. Whatever. Ow. So this is the fade. It's kind of reminiscent of, uh, uh, in a sense, kind of sort of purgatory or um, or uh, some form of uh, any one of the random other places, like uh, the other place, not Valhalla, but the other one. I don't remember what it's called off the top of my head. It's 
not the one where you stay with uh, uh, Odin, but the other one. I don't remember what it's called. Like a rat. Okay. What the? I don't know. Oh, there you are. Hi, ah, I see you. I have no idea if he's going to help me. I, I don't remember this. Uh oh, the game saved. Are there a lot of health potions around? A lot of mana potions? Ah, see? I was right. There was something around. Ah, what the?
I'll answer the riddles, why not? I forget about that fight. I always found it funny that he can't die. And this is about as all we got here, so, uh, yeah. <coughs> Come on. I'm going to use fire on a fire demon. See if that works. Ow. 
Well, <coughs> I will say this. This game is a lot harder on the computer. Because I played it on the Xbox. Yay, we will watch this all over again. I will edit all this out. <laughs> Ah, oh, right as I hit my health pot. Ah. Oh. <sighs> Maybe I can get him to help me. Oh, that'd be a good idea. I totally forgot about that. Here, I'm gonna try it this way then. Haha. <laughs> So, for those of you that have watched this entire video, and I know I haven't really been talking much, because I honestly wanted you guys to, in a sense, hear what the game is actually saying. I want you guys to understand and really actually think about the religion of this game. And that's one of the reasons why I actually started as a mage. Because starting as a mage, you actually get hit by the religion aspect of this game hardcore right off the bat and playing this game there are certain prejudices against the mages on the outside world you're viewed as uh, a demon so to speak or a uh, ab abomination which we'll get into that later but the fact that this game actually takes the religious aspect and as a mage hits you in the face with it right off the bat I honestly think that it it weaves a very intricate tale if you add the religion to the game without this whole religious aspect this entire thing I just did would have been pointless boring and mindless I mean yes there was a tutorial through everything and yes I really wasn't paying attention so there's gonna be a lot of editing but at the same time, looking at everything and the way it played out within the story, it it shows where influences of religions that we have had in the past as our world, so to speak, as humans, are influenced inside this game. And inside this game, the, the ability to in a sense, pick apart each little thing and be able to like, oh, well, this is reminiscent of this religion or this one. I'm not actually saying that religion's a bad thing, but in certain aspects in this game, they're using it to a zealot-esque degree that it destroys things that you hold dear. Uh, part of this whole situation with the mages is they're locked away. They cannot get out un 
they're, 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 they're stuck. They're going to live their entire lives within this tower, being watched 24-7 by soldiers in armor. Kind of seems eerily reminiscent of history, in a sense, if you look at World War II or if you look at the Crusades. Now, all of that being said, this has been a history lesson, in a sense. Just playing, what, 45 minutes of this game, if that? How does that make everyone feel, if you think about it? I mean, there's more two games than most people actually think. Because... The real world influences what we do within a lot of games, especially RPGs, um, or there, there's some first-person shooters. Uh, Call of Duty, for instance. You have the first five games, I think, because there's Call of Duty, Call of Duty 2, 3, uh, Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, uh, World at War... All of those were technically very realistic, and a lot of them actually happened except for the Modern Warfare series. The story itself is realistic. The World War One and Two in Vietnam all happened. So that being said, are they works of art replicating history, or are they history being replicated through the art? I, I, I'm I, I, thinking of it that way. It it kind of makes you think a little bit about history because history in itself has changed the world for the better and the worse at the same time. But having those influences within modern video games, it's like a new experience. How do you feel, as a, another person that plays video games or watches people play video games, how do you feel about the history interpreting the art, or the art interpreting the history? Because all of this is something that mankind, we, have created. Interactive stories. They're like the new books. Books sell by the millions. So do games. So do movies. We as a culture, and as a world, as a planet, are fascinated with new ways of storytelling. Originally, it was sitting around a campfire, hearing stories from the elders of whatever tribe you're part of. Which, in a sense, there's religion behind that as well. And then it moved on through song, stories themselves being written, books, movies, and now video games. All of this is due to what we have with technology. Yes, I understand that this is Saturday and I normally am doing my Wildstar videos. Sadly, I, I did cancel my subscription due to the fact that I like the game, don't get me wrong. In fact, I enjoy the game. But with a lot of stuff that's going on right now, I'm not financially able to actually do that. And I, I honestly was getting a little bored with it. I, I did enjoy it, don't get me wrong. But I, I think it was time to move on. Um, I'm starting this series, as I've said, so... This is my first episode of Religion and Games. Apparently it's History and Games, too. But, you know. So, I want to thank you all for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share my videos. Um, all the links will be in the description for my uh, social media. My Facebook, my Twitter, Tumblr, and I do believe I have uh, my uh, Twitch channel on there. So, thank you all for watching. I'm Uriel Locke.
this right here has been Dragon Age Origins. I am a mage. And keep watching. Because you never know what I'm going to do next. Or what this character is going to explode into next. Thank you for watching.